look at your cell phone at um for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and we're um right now we'll just let <clears throat> good evening everyone um my cell phone Hello everyone. Um, so welcome to a, another uh, virtual town hall. Um, we're gonna wait a few minutes before we begin. Uh, we're just gonna let all the attendees jump on. Um, we're also live on Facebook as well. Um, so bear with us a couple minutes until all the attendees jump on, all the guests, and we'll start momentarily. Okay, let's see here. We'll wait a few more minutes for everyone to jump on. <clears throat> uh, just to kind of give everyone that's uh, jumping on now uh, a little heads up on the agenda. Today we're going to be talking about fireworks. We're going to talk about uh, Hawthorne reopening. Uh, we'll have a Q&A session and at the same time we have uh, the Good Neighbors Organization and Ears to the Street of LA. Um, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Um, uh, joining us today on this virtual town hall to kind of uh, give a little background about themselves, their, uh, the, the message behind their movement, what they're looking into when it comes to a public uh, safety policy change, and uh, regards to the Hawthorne budget. Um, so as a little mo more heads up, um, just to be aware that it, I use, I'm using this platform to kind of give everyone uh, access to allow them to speak to their mind. Um, again, we might not all agree on the same thing, but uh, having open dialogue is the only way we can actually see change within not only the state, but the city. So again, um, let's see, bear that in mind as we wait to start. Um, I know fireworks is going to be a very hot topic, especially as we're going into 4th of July, um, as well as our end of the year budget. Um, so so please bear, we'll start in another minute. Looks like there's more people coming in. Let's see. Let me pull up the chat font. Here we go. Excellent. Uh, also remember that you can post questions as I'm uh, going through my Q&A part of the meeting. Um, and I'll try to get through all of them as well. And uh, whatever questions I don't get through, of course, I will hold that towards, uh, I'll either email or text you or call uh, myself and follow up with any unanswered questions. All right, we're going to begin the meeting now. Um, again, thank you all for coming out today uh, to Another one of my virtual town halls is just a way to interact and hear residents' concerns, as well as giving other organizations a platform uh, so they can have access to City Hall, uh, tell me their issues, explain what their, you know, their movements are, what they want to see different in the city. Um, last week we had Senator Steve Bradford. Uh, the week before we had a, a representative from the LA County uh, Health Department talking about COVID. July 9th, we're going to have State Treasurer Fiona Ma to discuss. Uh, financial relief for residents and commercial and nonprofit organizations. And then the following, the last meeting in uh, July, we will have the superintendents for both the Hawthorne School District and the Sentinel Valley School District uh, to go over how these schools are reopening, what measures they're taking, and what that program is going to look like uh, in regards to distance learning as we start to reopen both the city and the schools. Um, so first up, let me uh, begin by Introducing our, um, our guests for today. Um, they are part of the <coughs> Good Neighbors Association as well as Ears to the Street of LA. Um, so th they're, they're going to be on our, our uh, town hall today to kind of give a little background on what their movement is about, what they want to see differently within uh, the Hawthorne budget, um, and, and to really kind of listen to what the concerns are of many of the residents here. Um, they've had two marches in Hawthorne have been extremely peaceful. Uh, I've been able to attend both. Um, they're wonderful. 
but I just wanted to give them the platform so they can have a way of addressing their concerns and as well as seeing if there's middle ground and how we can progress and change uh, for the better. Uh, let's see, first we're going to begin with um, introducing good neighbors of Hawthorne, uh, Hansel and Malik, if you guys can, uh, let's see, introduce yourselves a little bit. I think you guys are on mute. <laughs> can you guys see us? Yes. Cool, so I'm Hansel, um, raised in Hawthorne, went to school out here. I'm part of Good Neighbors of Hawthorne. Uh, I'm Malik. I've also been raised in Hawthorne, just trying to help out. Thank you for having us. Thank you guys for joining. Um, and now from ears uh, on the street of LA, uh, we have Jaslyn and, hope not mispronouncing it, Shamia? Shamia. Shamia. Shamaya, there we go. Um, if you guys can kind of give, uh, you know, again, reintroduce yourselves and the organization you're a part of. Hi, I'm Jaslyn Durantes. Um, I'm a part of Ear to the Streets LA. We are more devoted to spreading political information for our youth, but we're definitely working with good neighbors um, in order to physically mobilize, but we also would like to politically mobilize. Yeah, Jazz said it perfectly. I'm Shamaya. I'm also part of Ear to the Streets LA. Um, and like she said, our goal is to help educate, but also deal with the background of politics, which is like voting, the census, and we want to spread that information. So we've been linking up with good neighbors to help do so. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for that introduction. Um, so uh, I, I want you guys to start off. Uh, we'll start with good neighbors, and, and you guys can all kind of um, uh, mute yourselves. Uh, so for Hansel and Malik, uh, if you guys can kind of give a little background on the organization, what you guys are um, trying to accomplish, what, what, what's the message and what is the change that you guys are uh, looking for that we can create an open dialogue uh, and bring everyone to the table. Okay, for sure. So we started a few weeks ago. Yeah, we started around a few weeks ago. Um, it was supposed to be a small protest originally, but it got big and we're planning on using this momentum to inform the youth, to get the youth to vote, because we, our mission is to defund the police and use those funds to fund schooling and to fund the community, invest the community instead of funding the cops. That's our mission, that's our goal right now. And um, ears to LA, if you can kind of, uh, you know, what's, what's the background of your organization and uh, a little history on that as well. So I think we started Ear to the Streets LA when the whole entire Black Lives Matter Matters movement began to arise again a couple weeks ago. And we thought that because all of this was happening during a pandemic, some of our people or individuals didn't know how to fully express their support for the Black Lives Matter movement. So we decided to create a platform where they did not necessarily need to physically go out and mobilize and protest, but they have a space where they can still, you know, find petitions, register to vote. There are different outlets to support the movement, and we wanted to be one of those outlets as well. Wonderful. Um... Okay, so uh, Hansel and, and, and Malik and uh, ears to the street of LA, uh, if you guys can kind of, um, I know you guys held uh, two protests within the city, uh, two marches, um, extremely peaceful, which I'm thankful, uh, thank, I'm thanking you guys for that. Uh, you're really trying to give a, leave a clear message uh, of what the movement's truly about. Um, what is it um, that you guys are looking for as a, um, as a change, specifically? Lots of things, lots of things. So again, I'm going to introduce myself to everybody. I'm Hansel, everybody who's watching, I'm Hansel. My friend Malik is here, and my colleagues are here. Um, you know, both of us here went to school in Hawthorne, we live in Hawthorne, and we care about Hawthorne. And we've seen Hawthorne police harass, you know, uh, people through the streets. A few months back, um, we saw the picture in the video of a young black male on prairie on his knees and there was around eight cops around him. Two of the cops had MR-15s pointed at him. So, because again, police brutality and police abuse is not just, it work, it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's here in Hawthorne, unfortunately. It's in Gardena, it's in Inglewood. Um, I'm here to present you guys with some demands. So, when we say defund the police, um, we don't mean on abolishing police, you know what I mean? We want to defund the police so we can use those resources 
and find better schools. We can find the community. For example, there's bathrooms in, in parks, local parks right now that have no soap during that, during that pandemic. They have no soap whatsoever. We know t I don't, you don't have to be a, a genius to know that teachers here don't make enough. You don't have to be a genius here to understand that um, the counselors, you don't have enough counselors in schools. So let me list some demands. We want you guys, we want to reach out to you so you can help us because we don't, we want to get rid of offensive military equipment owned by Hawthorne Police Department. We want to ban the use of rubber bullets, tear gas, pepper spray on protesters. Even though we haven't been attacked by those, uh, with those weapons yet, um, for future, because we're not stopping until we see change. For future protests, we really do not want rubber bullets used against us at all. And also, we, we believe that the Hawthorne Police Department must represent Hawthorne's demographics and they must reside in Hawthorne. If you guys are gonna have a better relationship with the city, uh, we need to hire people from Hawthorne who look like the people from Hawthorne. If they wanna serve the, the, the city, we believe that they will, they will have a better understanding and they won't be as wild. They won't be holding MR-15s at their own people. Because again, there was no need for MR-15s being pointed at the young black male. We also want to make records of police misconduct publicly available on both the Hawthorne Police website and the Hawthorne's website, because we've done research between this week. And it's been very difficult to find transparency with you guys. Uh, this, it's very hard for us to understand the budget. It's very hard for us to understand, or for you guys to tell us the misconduct that you guys have done. Um, Hawthorne PD and Hawthorne hides that from us. And we as people demand transparency, because you guys work for us, you guys serve us, and we need to know what's going on. We need to be very transparent with the people. We, um, you know, one of their future goals is also to establish an independent kind of review board that is representative of the community. So that that board will be will consist of having reports of deaths at the hands of the police, not just deaths, of all the misconducts as well. So it will be like a board that will keep the police in check. That board will be um, created by the people for the people. Again, it doesn't have to be that your neighbors are going to be on that board. That's just an idea and a demand that we bring, we bring it towards you and towards Hawthorne officials. Because we have to keep, if we have to keep this misconducts under control. And if they happen, we have to be transparent about them. Uh, you bring up a lot of good. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, again, it's all good. We created a form. Us, good neighbors, collaborate. We collaborate with the Street Streets of LA. We, we have created our form. It's on our bio, on your Instagram page. That form has all of our demands. It has how we can use the money towards education. Uh, maybe Jasmine and Shamaya want to speak on the education needs that we currently need in the school system. We went to the school system. We know how it is. We met with the superintendent from the Hawthorne School District, and that didn't go very well. So we know how it is because we, we, we are part of the system. We are the people. We live here. So again, if people can go to our bio, look at our form, you don't have to agree with the funding the police, but before you sign the petition, I, I, I urge you and beg you to leave your demands there and to read out our demands. Because we have the, we, we specify why, how we want those funds to be used. Again, we, again, I really urge you guys to read everything that we put on there. It's going to be on our Instagram bio. If Shamaya and Jasmine want to speak about how we've decided on how it would be appropriate to use the funds towards schools, they can do so right now. Um, uh, if I can uh, jump in real quick, uh, so just to let the uh, viewers know, um, I, I, there are a lot of questions coming in. Um, so once uh, uh, Shamaya and uh, Jasmine kind of go over their side as well, um, I will be bringing out your questions to the uh, guests. Um, so just wait momentarily, just want to let the audience know that. Uh, Jaslyn, Ashamaya, go ahead. So as Hansel said, the form in our bio is a petition form and you're petitioning to defund the Hawthorne PD. On that form, we explain what our demands are as well as where these funds can possibly be allocated towards and that includes education. As Hansel mentioned, we did speak to the superintendent and we're in the process of speaking with more district boards because we want to know where 
our schools are struggling the most. Of course, we understand firsthand because we attended some of these schools, but we want to have a better idea. And so a lot of issues came up. We've also spoken to teachers because we know that out of everyone in the educational systems, teachers and students are the ones who are constantly, you know, who need have the most needs, yet they're not being met. And I think that um, some issues that we saw was our counselor ratio. You know, in some of these schools, we have one counselor for 500 students, and they only have 30 seconds to a minute to meet with these counselors. And on top of that, the workload that these counselors take includes, you know, they get training for um, students who may potentially be suicidal. They have to deal with um, students different classroom schedules they're working with parents and they're serving a lot of students and are they really qualified to work with that many students so that is one thing that we definitely think that more our schools need is more counselors and we can use the funds that are going towards the police now which is about 38 million dollars to instead go to our schools and there are also um, other programs that we can fund in our schools that are listed on our form in the link in our bio. And then I don't know if Shamaya wants to add on. We have yeah. a lot more, but I, I just thought that the counselor was definitely one that was a big one. Yeah, um, counseling is totally super vital to student mental health, which is how you get success throughout your, your school and career. Um, another issue that the superintendent also brought up was that we need more wraparound services that help the community as well as the students that attend these schools. So um, an example of wraparound services include immunization, um, immigration services. Um, they have programs where they give eye checks to students, dental checks to students. Um, the superintendent has mentioned that there is not enough of those programs ready available at the schools and ready available to the citizens of Hawthorne in general. Um, and schools should be a place where people can utilize um, those resources. Um, so that is one way we can use funding. We can also use funding to better train teachers. In height of this pandemic, we see that all teachers are being forced to um, move their educational setting online which is very difficult and a lot of these teachers do not have the training or the um, technological intelligence to assist their students the way they need to during this pandemic um, so since it's no since we are unsure when we will be back in person i think that um, educating teachers on a greater scale about technology in addition to other things like implicit bias training um, you know sensitivity training for teachers um, is important and we lack that and um, in communities where students have complex problems and um, different you know multifaceted situations going on in their lives we need teachers to be able to assist and help their students as much as they can um, and so funding can go towards training like that and like jazz said we have um, extended list of demands and kind of like ways that you can use these this money to help fund schools and better the people um, who live in Hawthorne and their, their children, really. And also, we're still in process of obtaining more information and more demands from our community members themselves. And on the petition form, there also is a place where you can submit one of your demands. I know that the LGBTQ plus community has definitely reached out and told us, you know, we want more resource centers for ourselves. We want also more art and music programs funded because again, it's a it's a way that students can de-stress. And these students are come from very complex backgrounds. And we believe that these resource centers at schools need to be offered. Uh, very good points. Um, education is a, uh, a very important thing um, and especially getting more funding to our students and our schools is, is extremely important the, the what a lot of people don't <clears throat> know is that when it comes to the city of Hawthorne um, it's kind of different than the city of LA uh, the budget for Hawthorne and the Hawthorne school districts are managed separately um, so they don't intertwine and it's it's we can't take funds into their budget and vice versa um, so that is something that you know working um, 
regionally and working together um, as all three districts. Uh, bringing everyone to the table is a very important thing because there's three separate budgets. Um, we do all have to sit down together and, and coordinate, um, which is sometimes difficult. Uh, as you mentioned, you sat down with some of the superintendents, you've discussed some of your concerns, um, but when you have three different pots of uh, money to deal with, it's, uh, it's a tough one. But having this open dialogue makes it easier for us to find these um, middle grounds for us to start fixing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, totally. Um, I would like to mention that when we discussed with the superintendent, um, she let us know that um, the police department does give funding to the schools to an extent, um, which is why we are mentioning um, reallocating those funds. Um, since the police you know, force has enough money to give extra money to you know, schools, but not enough money to properly train officers, et cetera, et cetera. We feel that when you are reallocating those funds that you could utilize the money that you are receiving to go to these schools so that you are funding instead of police officers. Like you did say, I did not know the ins and outs, but that was why we have mentioned schools as an option of how you can fund because we have been told that the police do fund schools, so. Uh and even if you know uh the budgets are separate and stuff that's one reason why we mentioned the wraparound services because mm -hmm. those don't need to be directly from the school's budget that's where the money can be reallocated and the reason why we chose schools besides for the importance of education is that's where a lot of families feels a safe place for them which is why even if the budgets are separate for the schools we can still help these students out and help these families out with the budget we want to real, reallocate. Again, we believe, we firmly believe that the more resources you put into a community, the less crime there will be, the less trouble there will be. So if we use this money to, okay, so um, the Hawthorne Police Department right now, they're planning on giving 38 million to the Hawthorne PD, right? As for the community, I believe the number is, I believe it's three or, or four. Um, to me, that's very lopsided. Um, we aim on defunding the police. We would like half. But we, I mean the people. So it doesn't have to be half because we understand that there needs to be training to be done and there needs to be wages to be paid. But the, there's been a history of all this money, yet they haven't properly trained the, the cops or the, or the officers. That's not our problem. They, they haven't, they were, we, they've been having the resources and they haven't, um, they haven't used them properly. That is no longer a problem. Our problem is to fund schooling, to fund the community, invest into the community. The more resources that we have, the less crime there will be everywhere, which is why we are uh, mobilizing people. That's what we stand for right here. This is why we stand for. Yeah, and that's why eventually that the bringing everyone to the table, as you guys mentioned, is the, uh, the best way to do this, uh, is coordinating all three budgets together to see where that middle ground is. Um, it, it would be easier if they were all combined already, like in LA. Um, but this way, the way you guys are doing and asking for um, bringing everyone to the table to relook at everything, especially on education, is a, is a very um, very important thing. It's, it's a lovely task you're doing. You're not saying it's for you know other random things or other random items. These are truly to help not only the residents but the students themselves. Yeah. Um, so, but we're going to take a few questions from the audience um, that you guys can kind of uh, help answer when they have a. A few questions on that. Uh, we have a question from uh, John Yaboa. Um, says, hi, where do we go to donate to good neighbors? Nice. How you doing, John? Um, well, first, I want to thank you for wanting to donate to us. Um, let me explain you what we do with that money. So when you donate to us, we use that money to buy supplies for the protests. We use that money to buy snacks and water, masks, and hand sanitizer for the people who go and stand with us on the streets. Cool. Most of the money then gets donated to the families of George Floyd, to the families of Robert Fuller, and other families that have been affected by the system. So again, um, you can follow us on Instagram. We've already posted our Venmo account, but we will add our Venmo on the form. So be aware. We're gonna add our Venmo information on the form. That way you guys can donate and support this. Uh, the Venmo name is at Good neighbors, good spelled G U D, neighbors spelled like normal, and you can find all us there. Oh, sure. So, again, what was it? Good neighbors, G U D for good, and then just neighbors normal. Thank oh. you. Cool. 
Uh, the um, thank you, Brad, for answering that question. Uh, the next one that we have is. Ah. One comment we have from Rhonda Sullins is, um, I believe some funds should go towards training of the police and certainly weed out unlawful, non-law abiding police as with any other group of people. Um, so these kind of like a, a comments of a, uh, towards your guys' uh, uh, message and movement, which is great. Um, we have another one from uh, an anonymous attendee, beyond banning the use, can we restrict the access to pepper spray, rubber bullets, military, military slash riot gear, etc.? We are seeing other cities ban the use and police forces use it anyway. Can we remove their access? Uh, I know for the city of Hawthorne, uh, they are look, our police department are looking into restructuring themselves into following these. Um, I think the county gave out eight separate um, ideas of how to um, reform themselves to better engage with the public. Um, I'm happy to say that they are moving forward on that um, and quite different than some other some other cities and their police departments. So um, wait a little bit longer and you'll start to see those changes, especially in our policy as well. Um, we've asked for that in our uh, council meeting and uh, there was no uh, disagreement uh, of any of those. Uh, they do agree that some of the tactics used by other police departments, especially out where George Floyd was and other instances were on the extreme side and the you know unlawful side. Uh, it went too far. They shouldn't have done it, um, which is a great thing to see that our, our, our own police station is trying to change actually, actually, after seeing all this um, movement and activism from you guys as well. Um, the voice and the movement you guys are doing is really what's inspiring all of this. Um, if not, it would have been a lot harder to see this change. Uh, there's still a lot more change. I'm not saying it's done. It's not nowhere near. Trust but, me, we're, uh, we're just getting started. Right. Uh, but I'm yeah. saying from, from their side, um, there, there's a lot more change that needs to be done. Uh, but this is, this is great what you guys are doing. Um, do you um, do, real quick. Oh, one question. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. I just wanted, we got, the, you mentioned uh, Rhonda Sons. Uh, how you doing? Thank you for watching. Um, she talked about funding should go towards the police and training, and certainly we don't allow for non-law by your police as we any group of people. Uh, Rhonda, um, we agree, absolutely. However, the police have had, they've had these funds for decades, and they've never decided to weed out those unlawful um, acts. They never decided to properly train uh, the police department. So money is clearly not the issue because they've been had lots of resources that would allow them to train these police officers in a better way, but they haven't yet. Um, absolutely, we demand change. Like, it's cute that uh, Hawthorne PD is apparently willing to listen and willing to change the training methods, but the, which, when I say transparency, we need you guys on the website to show the steps you guys are taking forward. Because my team and I and all the other young people who are fighting alongside us, um, it's hard for us to get access to the budget, get access to the information, get access to police misconducts, and get access to uh, the things that police is trying to do to improve relationship with the people. So we need way more transparency again. And I know I spoke about this earlier, but I'll bring it up again and again, because we as the people demand to see what's going on behind the curtains, because you work for us, you're supposed to protect us. And you're absolutely right. Uh, transparency is one of the biggest things I always fought for. Um, it's surprising that you mentioned that it's hard to see the budget. Uh, that's alarming to me. Um, so I'll make sure that's a, an easier um, access point. I'll also put that on my own website uh, for transparency reason. Um, we don't want residents to struggle to find the budget. Uh, Hawthorne's had had a history of, you know, misconduct with our budget, uh, with other past electeds. So uh, thank you for bringing that to my attention that even for you guys as youth, it's hard to, you know, being tech savvy as well, and it's so hard for you guys to even find it, that's alarming. Um, so I, I agree, I agree with you. Uh, that would be the first thing I, I, I look into and um, I'll have either it's gonna be on the city website and they'll work on that, but I will just certainly put it on my own website for easier access to find. Um, we have another question right here uh, from Lisa Agacoli. Sorry if I, if I mis mispronounced your last name. Uh, do you plan to meet with local union leaders? As in us, as in uh, for yes. us here, uh, we would love to. I mean, again, like we've had two protests. 
And we're not slowing down. We're not slowing down. We're just getting started. That's the next step that we thought about. We would love to contact union leaders. Um, Hider, if you can show the people our Instagrams, they can DM us right now. Go to the form, messages, or email is um, the neighbors of Hawthorne at gmail.com. Simple as that. G U D, neighbors of Hawthorne at gmail.com. Reach out to us. We would like to meet with union leaders right now. Yeah, we're actually in As the process. Need, it's not a bad. Keep on, keep on. Go ahead. We're actually in the process of reaching out, especially to teacher unions. So if you all have any unions that would like to reach out to us, as Hansel said, please reach out because we definitely want to have a conversation with you or a Zoom meeting or whatnot. So yes, we do plan on, on meeting with local unions. We think that's very important. Again, we beg people of Hawthorne to stand for what they want because it can't just be us, the 15 people in this live. It can't just be uh, for my colleagues and, and the other colleagues from here to the streets of LA. It's not just my problem, it's our problem. So we need to work together. I know you guys are encouraging the youth for taking a step, but when, we, when the youth takes a step, we expect the same guy, we expect the same from you guys, from the adults. So again, I not only do I ask, I demand you to stand for what you want. If you agree with what we have, look at the form, read what we have. If you agree, if you have any feedback, give it to us. Stand with us. We will meet with you. We would like to meet with everybody out there. Again, we deserve we, we deserve more coverage when these marches because we are trying to show that everybody in Hogwarts needs to be aware that there are kids fighting for what they believe is right. And again, we have I believe we have great valid points on our form. So please, I invite, I demand you all to read those. And if you're good with us, hit us up. We'll work with you. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for, for answering that uh, so eloquently. Um, the, the next question that we have is from Kevin Mayer. Um, if the police are defunded, um, who will protect us? Uh, we can't police ourselves. Uh, the police will not stick around without salaries. Uh, we will have vigilante groups or militias. In the end, we would need martial law to be imposed. Uh, that would take ma away many rights. Um, and I, I know that this is always brought up, especially when the comment of, you know, defunding the police. Um, and that's a very good question as, uh, and maybe you guys give more background on what it actually means. It's not, a, it, it's not on the basis of dismantling. Um, it's being taken out of context. It's not like you guys are like, oh, take them away. It, it's not that. Um, so if you guys can kind of give a more direct message of, and maybe change, you know, what it means really in, in people's mind of, it's not abolishing police, it's more of a restructure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, when we say defund the police, we're not saying take away all their funding so that they can just figure it out themselves. We're saying that the police department gets too much funding for what they do, and they're doing too much. Uh, police officers all around the U.S. are responsible for taking care of, uh, you know, violent crimes, nonviolent crimes, mental health crises, uh, you know, they have a very, very big scope in their job. And when they have, you know, uh, so many things that they're responsible for, they're not going to do a good job for it. So instead of putting all this money into the police department, we want to defund it and, or at least take away some funding and reallocate it to the community. So we're not saying we want to cut all the police officers' salaries. We're not saying we don't want to pay them anymore. We just want to say all this extra money that they're getting can be used and put into the community instead of being put into the police department, buying all this unnecessary stuff or, uh, you know, being used in the police department. Again, um, defunding the police is the first step. Defunding the police is, is the first step. Um, and we've asked for reform. We've asked for cameras to be worn. And we need to take harsher methods or har harsher like measures against uh, the Hawthorne PD. Because again, we saw it locally first, but we need to defund them. We need to defund them and allocate those, those resources, all that money we can allocate it into our community. Um, uh, uh, kind of picking back on that, uh, another question from a, a resident, uh, Jerry Orlman, uh, regarding transferring funds from the Hawthorne Police Department budget to other things to use within the schools, 
would that require a ballot measure of some sort? Are funds budgeted, committed, particularly to schools, according to designations in ballot measure passed? Um, I think I'll, I'll take a more question on my side. Um, when it comes to transferring funds from Hawthorne police budget to like other things in schools, um, it's it, it's a it it's a weird kind of thing. It wouldn't act a ballot measure um, because they're separated um, by uh, by law. The the funds that they are allocating to schools is more of a community engagement side, um, more of a uh, security side of it. Um, so they allocate internal budget to the Hawthorne school districts for those kind of uh, types of uh, activities. Uh, when it comes to actually merging them together, um, they've been they've always been separated. So it, it won't be able to be combined. It's um, and it's the treasury that want to keep everything transparent and separated because um, every board has their own way of wanting to spend money. This way it won't be shifted left and right. Um, so the, the funds, it's an internal thing. So it'd be the city of Hawthorne council themselves um, reallocating and redistributing the funds within our police department um, to different programs, but it wouldn't be straight to um, the schools themselves as here you take this chunk uh, into their budget. It's, it's separated, uh, but they can allocate certain funds to these community events, engagements um, regarding schools, uh, the community, uh, you know, uh, psych evaluations, things of that nature. Uh, we have another one um, from a, another question comes in from Angela. Uh, is there a community review board for Hawthorne PD? Well, I'm, I'm, let, I'm sorry, that's actually one of our demands. I don't think there is, that's one of our demands right there. Okay, we need to keep them in check as well. Uh, when it comes to community review, um, uh, when it has like residents and citizens themselves. No, there is not. Uh, that is one of the suggestions the county also made um, for the entire uh, LA County to look into for all the police departments is to have some kind of citizen and community engagement um, to address these um, occurrences. Um, and it's one of the, uh, you know, issues and demands that the Good Neighbors uh, organization brought up as well as year to the road um, LA. Uh, so that is something we're looking into as well. It really does help ease uh, tension and it's, it's a, it's a, it's a moving and beautiful process that you'll start to see more, hopefully, knock on wood, God willing, more police departments jumping on board with as well. Let's see, another yeah. question. <laughs> another question we have here is from um, Hectorlene Jarman. Uh, it sounds like some of the conversation is around mental health counselors in schools. Are uh, there currently not enough counselors in the schools? Uh, that's more of a question for you guys to tackle. Based on the research that we've done, um, I'm not sure if Jasmine and Shamaya want to talk about this. We have the ratio of counselors to students in the Hawthorne School District. Shamaya and Jasmine, you guys want to speak on that? Yeah, um, so I believe the ratio is about one counselor per school in the elementary schools. Um, I think two elementary schools in the Hawthorne District share a counselor. Um, and I think there are two at the high school level, which is like HMSA. Um, in addition to that, the schools are, have social workers in training available at the school. So they're not even- um, Official. Yeah, official so social workers. And I think there's about one or two per school. Um, so clearly you can see just saying one counselor to cover all of the emotional um, toll that all these students have is not enough. In addition to that, counselors, as anybody who's been in a school district knows, handle way more than just emotional things. They handle um, school readiness, they handle bullying, they handle, um, in high school, they handle their college preparedness. So they do so many different things, um, and there's one per school. Um, and they have to go to classes, they have to meet with students, they have to talk with parents. Um, so it just clearly isn't enough. There aren't enough counselors. And like we say, emotional health is really important. There have been cases in Hawthorne where students have been expressed feeling suicidal and not having people to talk to, um, which is why they have recently implemented suicide prevention training for teachers and the like, because it is a problem. And so we right. need to be addressing it. It's not just about counselors. Mm -hmm. It's about psych 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 uh, 
psychiatric help too. I'm sorry. Yeah. Man. Again, like then we have the numbers right here on the doc that we will post here soon. The Centennial Valley School District ratio of counselors is 500 to one. So it's one counselor, and then with an average of 500 students every day. And they have like little assistants who are not properly trained, who are not legit, like, who are like legit counselors. And again, it's beyond counseling, psychiatric help for the youth in the schools who deal with a lot more than just schools. Yeah. School must be a safe place, safe haven for all. And one counselor cannot do the job that 25 psychiatrics would do. And, if, and apparently, the Central Valley School District cannot afford that right now. But if we allocate those funds from the Hotman BD there, I believe we will be able to at least not just back up the counselors, but include way more psychiatric help in schools, as well as art programs, musical programs, and uh, web developing programs, and engineering programs, because STEM is also the future. And we must, charter schools in Hawthorne cannot be the only privileged schools that have enough education on STEM. All public schools in Hawthorne deserve to be taught on how to properly, how to properly code a website or engineer or STEM classes. All schools in Hawthorne need the same resources of this more as the as Da Vinci did. Da Vinci is in a more privileged, was in a more privileged area. I went there, so I saw how our education was at times better in the education some folks received in Hawthorne High or in other high schools. So that, that's just what I have to say about what Shabaya said right there. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Um, addressing uh, mental health issues um, could be an easy thing uh, for us to implement within our, our police budget. Um, because what, what it's doing is also preventing future, um, you know, unlawful cases or, you know, unlawful things from happening because you're, you're addressing what could become a problem in the future. Now, they, you know, some of these individuals just need someone to talk to. They just need a little bit of help, a restructure. Um, when they don't get it, it begins to fester and pops. I agree with that. Um, having more uh, resources towards mental health is needed. It's, it's a big concern, especially with our youth, especially within our college campuses. Um, so having more engagement like that sounds like a wonderful idea. Um, it, it shouldn't take uh, that much as well uh, because, you know, police departments do have their own kind of department when it, when it comes into dealing with what they call 5150s, um, individuals of that nature. So um, having that also changed and shifted towards allocating that to some of the schools as well into the community um, should be an easy process to do. Um, and it's a, it's a, actually it's a very good idea to have. Um, we'll have a few more questions uh, before I wrap up with you guys and then jump on to the city side and answer the city questions for the residents on a whole array of fireworks and Hawthorne reopening. Um, and then let you guys close out. Uh, the last couple of questions we'll take here is uh, one is from Sh Shirley, uh, would defunding the HPD decrease their manpower? As an older citizen of Hawthorne, I'm concerned that this may lead to an increase in crime. Uh, to that kind of question, uh, what do you guys think? I feel like we were, we addressed that earlier. I'm sorry, what was the gentleman, gentleman's name? It was, uh, it's a, a um, woman, mm -hmm. Shirley. Oh, I'm so sorry, Shirley. Um, great question, we've addressed that. Um, yeah. Uh, well, two two parts of that question. One thing is uh, when we want to invest in the community, uh, we're planning that uh, not we're planning, but the more you invest into the community, the less crime there is. And we're not talking about a massive. When we say defund the police, we're not talking about a massive layoff of the police. Uh, we are talking about, uh, for example, demilitarizing the police. You know, uh, I don't know if Hawthorne PD really needs, you know, a huge tank and a bunch of uh, you know, mil MR-15s and stuff and military equipment, you know? We're talking about defunding all of the unnecessary things they need, but we're not talking about firing half the police officers, so we, you know, uh, and we, you know, just for no reason, you know? All the money that we're taking from the police department, we're reinvesting it into the city, and the more you invest into your community, the less crime there's going to be. Absolutely. So, right. Um, like so earlier, bad. yeah. Like earlier, how um, someone commented, in addition to our demands, 
how we have listed that we want a minimization of tear gas, of rubber bullets, of noise cannons, things like that. All those things are being paid for and are very expensive, but also not very necessary. Um, so when we can use that money to put it into things that our communities need, then there will be even less of a reason for them to need them, not that they need them anyway. Um, so in addition to that, Hawthorne Police Department has about maybe 100 police officers and 60 support staff. Um, so not that they're saying they don't have crazy manpower, but about the regular SWAT team is about 60 people, you know? So they can become more quality officers, become more trained um, in de-escalation and, you know, um, you know, hand-to-hand -hand tactics that don't require weapons that are um, non-deadly ways to stop crime as well um, are very vital to the, kind of like to improving our police system and in, to improving our communities. So when we say to fund the police, we really just mean, as you know, was mentioned, taking away unnecessary things and making them reconsider how they spend that money. So if you have less money, you're going to really consider where you're putting each dollar, you know, and you're going to put it towards things that matter. So that's really what the goal is, I guess. Also, I'm not sure if uh, Michael Ishi is, is watching this, but I want him to listen to us and listen to me right now. Um, we need to be, I must say transparency one more time. I mean, I must say each time I'm here, we need to see how much of that 38 million actually goes towards wages because I'm tired of people saying you gotta pay officers. Sure, sure. But how much of that goes to the wages? We need to see, we need you guys to break down that 38 million, where does it go? You guys never, you guys have never told the people. We demand transparency. We need to know how you guys plan on using that money. We do not need a whole SWAT team in office. We do not need MR15s again, like he said. We need no crime, no really no tear gas, no bullets in office. So again, by the time, hopefully, I really hope that we get the funding and by the time we defund the police and we invest in the community, I guarantee you that there will be less crime in Hawthorne in like, in the span of time. So again, the more resources you put in the community, the less crime there will be. Uh, and last, last thing about this, this goes to also answer another question. Uh, which asked, uh, can we send mental health counselors uh, for nonviolent calls? Uh, which is something that's perfect because like they said before, police aren't trained or at least aren't trained much in de-escalation, right? They don't know how to calm a situation down, you know? It can go from a simple call, a simple like dispute and stuff and blow up into something way worse where someone gets arrested and someone goes to jail, you know? Um, so again, one of our demands is actually to create a, a civilian culture of unknown first responders to Superman law enforcement. Yeah, so uh, like Hansel said, what, like the, one of the demands we had is another separate uh, force that's unarmed and it's used to help the police officers. So it's not like all their manpower is down and stuff. And these guys are the ones who are going to answer nonviolent crimes and de-escalate situations. And they, actually, the, we believe that they must have no affiliation with the police and have a background in social work. We don't want any affiliation with the police of this group because that leaves less, less space for corruption. So it's gonna be a whole separate group that will be nonviolent, that will be very educated in de-escalation and mental health as well. If you call the police on a mental uh, disabled individual, there's a big chance they're gonna talk about. And enough is enough. Um, you guys are making very impressive points, uh, especially for for, for young, how young you guys are, I'm, I'm speaking like as if I'm older too, so I'm maybe just a few years older than you guys. Um, but, but you know, before we kind of wrap up this session, because I really want to hear uh, a few more um, points, um, Jaslyn and, and uh, Shamaya, can you kind of touch base on, on what Ears to the Road in LA um, kind of sees in this matter as well? And then um, right after that, we'll have you guys kind of give your wrapping uh, comments, tell the people, uh, you know, a little where they can donate, where they can reach you guys. And then um, I'll jump on to city business and then I'll, I'll just actually address one last um, comment uh, that was made. Um, go ahead. Yeah, ears to the streets LA um, is 
Oh, sorry. It's very much, yeah. Edu it's very much an organization that we put together to educate and inform people um, about these things. So a lot of people, like how you said earlier, don't understand the concept of defunding police. Um, they'll understand that there's a prison industrial complex, that there's a school to prison pipeline. Um, they don't understand redlining. They don't. Under there's a lot of things that um, we weren't thoroughly educated about in our public education system. Um, and Ears to the Streets, LA kind of is taking initiative to educate the people on how, on what is really going on in the world around them. Um, so we really support good neighbors in their mission to mobilize the people. Um, we have been working together to form these demands um, to kind of spread information together um, to show people how easy it is to register to vote, how easy it is to fill out the census, because a lot of people don't know about how to do those things or the value of those things. Um, so that is what Ear to the Streets LA's goal is. Um, and we want to see an improvement in our communities and we want to take um, the initiative by educating so that way people can stand up for rights, kind of just how like all of us are. We were educated, we learned some things about these situations and we're still learning. I mean, we're open to continue to learn um, from others. And so that is really what Air to Streets LA is about, I think, you know, Jazz. Yeah, I think that was very well said. That is definitely our mission. And I think one of the questions, her name, I, well, their name is Nydia. And she did point out that maybe the media is voting a part of this change. And yes, 100%, we believe that the youth needs to go out to vote because oftentimes we overlook our local po politics. And so Ear to the Streets LA also wants to push our youth to let them know that you are the power and you are the ones out here mobilizing physically. Therefore, you must vote. Not only do you have to be out here, you need to contact your council members. You need to make sure you know who your mayor is. Mayor Vargas, I demand you speak to us. You see us talking to council member Awad, so you need to speak to us as well. The other council members, you also have to speak to us. This was our first step. As we have said, this is not the first and only call that we will have. We demand that we speak to the rest of our local government because these demands are pivotal. Our people are getting killed out there. There was a killing that happened in Gardena a week ago. You know, the, these things are still happening in our communities that we have to address. And again, it's it. this involves Hawthorne, yes, but this also encompasses and affects the South Bay in general. So this is just the first step. Like Hansel has been saying, this is only the beginning. It's just the start. And she also speaks about discussing with all, uh, all council members. I agree. I think we have to meet with all council members as well. And in addition to meeting with all of them, I want to stress that this should not be a one-time communication thing. It should not be a one-time meeting. We give you demands and then you ignore them. They should be taken into consideration. They should be built upon. Um, these bonds should be continued throughout your term because these are the types of conversations that will always need to happen, will continuously need to happen if we want to continue to improve the communities that we dwell in. So, yeah. And especially now, we will push our youth to come out in November. I promise you, because we are angry and we will be out there in the polls. So your election is in our hands. I promise you. And that's what Ear to the Streets LA is about, is to not only let us know we're physically mobilizing, but best believe that comes November, we will be out there because we will do our research on our local politics as well as our federal politics. Again, like... I was planning on saying just that, um, which is, see, this is why Good Neighbors, and we decided to partner up with the uh, Ear Search Juice of LA, um, reasons like that. Now I urge you guys, I urge everybody watching to research the history of Hawthorne. Uh, the city was once a sundown town. I don't think I need to explain what a sundown town is. I feel like we should all do your, our individual research. And we can still see the results of racism lingering in our city today. In the city, there's clearly a divide. Let's not act, let's not play ourselves. Those folks who live closer to Manhattan Beach don't even like to be called Hawthorne. They like to be called Hawley Glen. They like to be called Del Air. There's a clear divide. That divide has been in Hawthorne for years and decades and decades and decades. It goes back to redlining. It goes back to all this nonsense that some of us know about. 
A lot of this tension is on hills, clearly. When we started marching towards that side, we saw police officers step up. But when we marched in the brown and black area of Hawthorne, where the cops at? We were in front of the police department, where the, co where the cops at? When we, the, when we marched in front of the police department, I want them to step out, look at my face, look at our faces, and be there, and hear us, not just ignore us, not just in a helicopter from above. Because we mean business, like, it, you, you get, people think it's sweet, like, I'm sure my Koishi thinks it's sweet. He probably thinks it's cute. But no, we're making moves. We're getting petitions to get you defunded, use this funds in the community. So it's not a game. We're just getting started, but we need more people to hop, hop on our board. And again, feel free to send demands, concerns, thoughts. It's all on the form. And we're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's time for everybody to step up. I don't want to hear you guys call the youth lazy anymore. I don't want to hear that anymore. I'm looking down on every adult that's not stepping up, that's not signing my petition, that's not donating, that's not doing the part. I'm looking down on you right now. And I urge you to stand with us if you believe in what we stand for. Um, you know, yeah, thank you for you guys saying that um, and, and mentioning all those great points. Um, and the points you brought up, yes, you're right. Uh, I am committed to make uh, these changes. There, is, there has to be restructuring. We have to relook at this, especially when it comes to schooling and mental health. Uh, mental health is a, a big part of what I'm uh, always into. Um, I've set up programs with Michael's Learning Place. We've had different kind of mental health programs set up as well to help our youth and to engage with rehabilitation. Um, it's an extreme full help, it's an extreme full helpful program. Um, it prevents future problems. Uh, but you're right. Uh, the pro points you brought up today, we need more engagement from our civil, civil leaders. Um, we need more conversations like this. It shouldn't be contested, it shouldn't be hot and heavy. All we're doing is, you know, it's opening dialogue. It's, it's a, having these discussions, we shouldn't come at it as we're combative, we're attacking, it's, we're just, we just wanna to talk to see where we can get to and, and kind of find this middle ground. Um, for the budget part uh, on, on the police department, um, <clears throat> when, when I'm able to I have easier access for you guys to see where the budget is, um, if you do actually attain it and see it online under the finance department, um, they have uh, detailed um, information on where those funds go to um, and what department and what positions and things like that nature. Um, it, it could be because you guys aren't able to find it. Um, it. It seems that it's not transparent from the police department side, but that was a big move we did back in the past is to make it transparent. Uh, but I'll, I'll show that link more on my website so it's easier for you guys to gain access to it, see where it's going. Um, again, when you're digging deeper, um, you'll find other things as well. Um, but just to kind of bring it to you guys' attention, you will be able to see where they're going um, and kind of scrutinize in more detail of uh, where the funds are allocated. Um, but yeah, it, it, is, it is hard. Yeah, it's, it's, it is hard to kind of hear from you guys where to find it. Um, but under the finance director tab at City Hall, if you click on that, it's right there um, all, every city budget year. And then there's a website called, a lot of people don't know this one. Um, oh, why is it slipping? Open, uh, not open gov. Um, you know, I'll, I'll post the link on my website uh, where you can actually look up every position and every employee, whether it's uh, an elected, a part-time, a committee leader, um, and it gives their detailed um, salary per year, which includes their cost to the city. And that means like, you know, their health benefits, their health package for that entire year. Um, it's, a, it's a very unique website. Um, I'll post that as well on my website so you guys can you know, click on and look at it. Uh, but being more transparent, allowing you guys to see where things are going and where we can kind of shift funds to better address the community, um, that's my commitment to you guys. Um, if you don't see these changes of transparency on my side, by all means, please grab me by the ear, um, yell at me, that's, that's what I'm here for. I am your punching bag, I do work for you. Um, but yes, rest assured that I will make it easier um, especially on my website to gain access to these information. Um, and this, this dialogue, whenever you guys want to have this continued dialogue, by all means, um, I'm here, open ear. It doesn't have to be on these Thursdays. Uh, if you guys want to have a private talk, you know, I, I have my own little private Zoom sessions if I, you know, at any time. Um, but no, I wanted to give you guys the chance and the platform to really discuss what the movement is about, what it means to defund. A lot of people think it's dismantling. It's not we do want police officers here, we want their protection, but in a way where it's community-based rather than, as you guys mentioned, militarized. 
Um, so b before you kind of wrap up on that. Um, we won't need any we won't need any say it again. I said if we make these changes now and we properly um, fund the community, we won't need them. We won't need them in the future. Uh, well, if we can actually right. get the human public in the long run to kind of uh, self-govern themselves, Ooh, that's a utopia. Uh, so I, I agree. These programs are, are great. Um, before we kind of let you guys go off and you know, I can answer the uh, city side uh, questions for the residents. Um, if you guys want to last real quick, say where they can donate, where they can find you guys. And then uh, I'll have you guys uh, kind of say goodbye to everyone. And then I'll jump into city work, city business. Okay, for good neighbors, you guys can find us on Instagram at good neighbors uh, or yeah, good neighbors. Just search up good neighbors, you guys can find us. Uh, our Venmo is also on that page. Again, it's at good neighbors. Uh, good neighbors for both the Instagram page and the Venmo is G U D. So then, uh, DM us on Instagram. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, and donate if you want, or at least sign a petition and show up for next March. I also want to give a big shout out to South Bay Community Care. They've helped me out. They gave me lots of guidance. Truly lots of people have reached out to us, gave, me, gave us lots of guidance. Um, we have a busy week. Just because we're not protesting uh, tomorrow doesn't mean we get to chill out, all right? So I wait, I've talked about it on, on, uh, on, our, uh, on your Instagram. Uh, we will go live tonight. I want the people to join. Let me give you guys a little update. So um, the meeting was today. We had the meeting. Thank you for having us, of course. Um, we want to meet with you guys next week, week after that, week after that, week after that. In fact, I want Alex Vargas here. I want Olivia Valentin here. I want Alex Montero here. I want Mike Tayera here. Oh, Hire, if you can show them that clip of me calling them out and being here, I want them here, sitting down with us. I want Michael Ishi right here sitting down with us. Cool. Sunday, um, we're not organizing this, but we are supporting this. I want to shout, I want to shout out the visual that we're going to have for the sisters that have been, that have been uh, killed by the system as well, the trans lives and the trans women that have been killed and the women as well. That's going to be this Sunday. Um, Monday, 8.30 a.m., Hawthorne Memorial Park. Alex Vargas, your mayor, wants to have coffee with the people. Nice. Uh, catch me there. Catch us there. I'm going to have coffee, but I'm going to bring smoke. And I'm, by that, I mean I'm going to bring fire. I'm going to bring pressure. I'm going to bring demands. I have questions to that man. All right? Cool. Catch us there on Monday. Fr Sunday, you know what? Sunday is the vigil. Monday, 30 a.m. with the mayor. Next Friday, I uh, expect the fire real soon for a protest. It's going to be next Friday. So stay tuned for that. As you said. Right. Yeah. Sorry, um, our Instagram is down below. Um, all funds that go to them, we're here as collaborators. So at this, we're all in this together. We're all a community, just FYI. So we don't have all of that information because we think that Good Neighbors definitely is, you know. Um, but again, if you have any union leaders that you would like us to reach out, you have any emails you would like us to send out, please let us know. DM us the information, we're open to it. And we will be posting updates that Good Neighbors post as well as us for this upcoming week. And we will, you can find us on Instagram. Right, and um, in addition to writing emails to our politicians and things like that, we also hold Zoom meetings where we spread education. We post about that on our page. So follow us for updates on that as well and tune in, we would appreciate that. Because when you are mobilizing, you have to be aware of what you're fighting for. So um, yeah, just thank you for having us. We are really appreciative of getting the chance to speak and list our demands. Um, and we hope that you guys take this to heart and kind of do more research. Don't just take our words for it. Learn about these things yourself and get mad about them yourself as well. Uh, you know, thank, you, thank you for all that. And thank you for joining and taking the time to even come on, onto this platform. Um, I do agree that you should have this conversation with other electeds. Um, I hope you can get them. Um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a little, you know, it takes a, takes a strong backbone to want to listen to what your residents are wanting and, you know, taking, take that beating. Um, so if you that'd be great. If you're bringing the conversation to them, I'm all for it. Please do. Um, it takes more than just one individual. Um, I'm, you know, it can't just be one on there fighting. Um, but yeah, please do. And then if you're out there, ask them, you know, what he thinks about Black Lives Matter and, you know, his comment on, uh, 
I think it was the last council meeting when he mentioned that uh, all lives matter too. Uh, it was it was kind of unique hearing that. Um, it, it's it, it's it's the focus is on this right here. It's it's Black Lives Matter. We it, it's, we we it's all about that. Uh, and so bring that. Uh, ask them. Um, and but yeah, have this discussion. And you guys are doing a phenomenal job. More residents here are, are praising you guys for you guys coming out. You're you're kind of showing up the older age group of you know what they kind of used to do back when they were younger um, and you're actually getting them out to uh out in the protesting world too i remember i think on monday uh, an individual on a motorcycle joined the uh march and he mentioned that with uh, the first 55 he hasn't seen this in 55 years and that's, that's a strong statement um so you guys are really making a change uh i'm proud of the push you guys are doing and i'm glad you're taking it in a way where it's not combative it's not you're not coming in you know headstrong and wanting to you know break things and dismantle no you just want to have an open clean conversation and try and find solutions um that that's amazing um so again by all means anytime you guys want to have another discussion i'm here i'm open um i've made myself easily accessible so by all means go ahead um and yeah uh but thank you thank you guys for again for uh joining um everyone who's watching check out their page um if you want to donate by all means um, and now I'll shift to uh, city questions um, now for the rest of the, uh, I think, half hour. <laughs> thank you. Real quick, uh, thank you yes, for sir. allowing us to speak to you publicly. Um, this, I mean, we have lots to say, lots to discuss. So again, it won't be the last one. But um, like you said, we're getting praise from the old generation. Praise is cute. It's cute. But we need action too. All right, step up. Just like we are. Step up. Cool. And also, we plan on, we really, we demand, we're not asking, we demand a meeting with all the council members. Michael Ishii, you too, I want you there, baby. Cool, thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you guys for joining me. Have a nice one, you guys. Um, for everyone else that's still on, uh, we're gonna be, uh, I'm gonna be asking, answering some other questions regarding the fireworks issue, and um, let's see here, and the Hawthorne reopening and other questions that we see here on Facebook Live and things of that nature. Let me see here. Uh, when was the waiver lifted? This is from uh, Lisa. When was the waiver lifted on issuing tickets for street sweeping? <clears throat> you know, it's been a very good question. I've been getting a lot of emails regarding street sweeping citations. Um, residents weren't given a full enough warning ahead of time. Um, they, they were sending out warnings, I believe maybe a week or two prior to June 1st. Um, but if you can, please uh, send me an email regarding your citation. Uh, let me take a look into it and see if I can extend some kind of waiver or see how we can address, um, you know, extending it to the point where a lot of these tickets to residents are, are forgiven. So please, by all means, whoever's out there watching, uh, listening and watching, um, send me an email, call, text um, with a picture of your citation with the date, and um, that way I can kind of help address that. Um, what are the three school districts? This is from Angela. Uh, what are the three, three school districts that incorporate the city of Hawthorne? Uh, the three are Hawthorne School District, Sentinel Valley School District, which includes the three high schools, uh, Londo High, Hawthorne High, and Losinger High. And then the other one is uh, Wiseburn School District, um, which has Da Vinci and the high school there as well. Uh, so those are the three uh, separate school districts. And, oh, and then the Hawthorne Math and Science Academy um, is part of the Hawthorne School District, so people don't kind of get uh, confused on that. Uh, let's see. The next question we have here is from Hector Lean. Can we send mental health counselors to nonviolent calls as was voted by the city council in LA? Um, as we talked and mentioned before, yes, that is a very good idea. Um, it does help address future problems. Um, so that is something that we are working with. We're also working with a uh, nonprofit organization called New Star Family Justice Center. Um, I'm working with them to create a program where they can work in tandem with our police officers, where they're sending units from their organization to help uh, you know, domestic violence issues, mental health um, related issues when it comes to that side. We want to look into expanding it a lot more. Uh, but yes, that is a wonderful idea. It's going to help um, create more community involvement. Uh, so yes, uh, that, that will be something we'll be looking into implementing very quickly. <clears throat> uh, from Mohammed Hussein, uh, street parking spots, marking, when will that start? Um, when, if you're talking about uh, the T parking uh, with the T parking um, 
paints on the street. Um, uh, you can actually get that now. You can go to City Hall and ask for that to be painted on, in front of your resident uh, residency. Uh, so just go to City Hall or even email. Um, City Hall will reopen publicly for individuals to walk in. Uh, let me check this now. City Hall will be opened July 6th. So again, that's July 6th. City Hall will be open for residents to walk inside and partake in city business. Um, city council meetings will still be held virtually because there is a set limit of individuals we can have in one room. Uh, by September, we should have it open again, completely normal. Uh, that's, you know, of course, there's no uh, second wave and uh, everything moves smoothly. But uh, email, uh, text, uh, I mean, not text, uh, email or call the city department now, uh, building and safety in regards to having the T parking spots painted in front of your residency. Um, if you want, you can wait until July, I think it's July 6th, um, the Monday right after 4th of July, um, to go in there physically and, you know, talk about the program, get more information about it. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, thank you, uh, Elaine, for, I should have seen that comment sooner. Uh, the website for the salaries, uh, as I mentioned before, which you can also find mine and everyone else's, is called Transparent California. Uh, so go to transparentcalifornia.com and that's where you can actually look up um, every city worker, every committee worker, every elected, anyone working in public office that their information is supposed to be public, um, you can find their uh, salaries there for years um, and their packages as well. Uh, so again, that's Transparent uh, California. Thank you, Elaine. Um, it was on the tip of my tongue, but thank you for uh, giving me that information. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, we have another one coming in from, uh, Jordan Sanchez uh, wants me to touch on the topic of job opportunities with benefits. How can I get my employer to cover my health and retirement? Um, you know, it's going to be a very good uh, question to bring up and discuss at the next town hall with the state treasurer. Uh, that is something that they're looking into, um, getting more funding for uh, to help these employers to address these concerns when it comes to health care and retirement for uh, their employees. Um, with job opportunities, um, as we begin to reopen the city, uh, you will see more uh, jobs open uh, because of the businesses opening up. Um, to get them to cover it, <clears throat> You know, it's it's uh it's one of those things where you would have to mobilize, and it's it's hard to uh, sorry to say that, but to get a lot of the employees base behind you in order to have your your top executives listen to cover your health and retirement. Uh, unfortunately, right now with all the businesses shutting down and COVID, you know that is hurting their bottom line. Um, they are using that to cut into the health and retirement benefits of a lot of their employees, which is which is very difficult and, and very hard to see. But if you can bring to their attention, there are um, small business loans, medium business loans, um, the state treasury department, uh, and that's why I bring her next uh, next uh, town hall meeting. They're also giving out loans to address this problem. They are, they're giving out interest-free loans. There are interest-free loans for um, employee payroll to put them on and uh, give them a health and retirement uh, fund. So please uh, go to my website under the COVID-19 section. You will find links to those websites. Um, you know, Bring that to their attention. A lot of businesses don't know about these. Um, and then if you, if you can also tell them about the next uh, town hall on July 9th, where uh, the state treasurer is going to be on our call to address these and even explain where all these uh, uh, loans are, where all these, all the free money is to help not only residents, nonprofits and businesses. Um, so yes, please join that if you're concerned about um, ED, uh, the, uh, what's it called? Uh, health, retirement benefits and your unemployment checks and stimulus checks. So please join that call with the state treasurer on July 9th, it is going to be a big one. She's bringing in four speakers uh, from her office as well. Um, I'm excited that she was able to uh, agree to come on. Uh, but yes, please uh, come on there and ask any and all questions regarding that. Oh, and uh, as an update for from the last town hall regarding Senator C. Bradford and his bill uh, regarding the 10 year payback for the eviction moratorium, it has a bill number now. I have sent my letter of support um, he has given me a draft of what that looks like. I'll be posting that and sending that as an email blast for everyone to read. Um, it's almost done and it's almost, you know, through its final approving process, 
Um, I, I know it's difficult to keep on waiting, but if you wait just a couple more weeks, it'll be in effect. And uh, those that can partake in it and take advantage of it, by all means, jump on the opportunity and you know, contact Steve, uh, Senator Steve Bradford. He's working on the bill with uh, Senator Pro Temp, uh, Tony Atkins. It's a wonderful bill. It's quite large, but it's gonna help a lot of individuals, renters, um, commercial sites, and landlords themselves. It's addressing them as well. We're not leaving you out. Trust me, we know you need to pay your mortgage and everything. Uh, so it is going to help you as well. Um, Hector Lean, the contact information, I will have that posted um, on the website and email that to you as well. So if you can't, you know, shoot me an email. Um, that way I can kind of give you access to their Instagram, their, their Facebook, all their contact information um, for the two groups that we're just on. Uh, Jennifer, <clears throat> we received a 16 notice to vacate on May 1st. I have sent a letter to property management company here in Hawthorne to fight since they're an eviction moratorium in place. What can I do since I have received any response from them? Can the city help me? Um, Jennifer, um, that, that's, a, that's a huge concern. If it was on May 1st, um, the eviction moratorium was pushed into effect till the end of June. We're looking into pushing it even further. But the fact is that the state's eviction moratorium lasted until May 31st, um, which was the one that the governor enacted. So by all means, please uh, sh call me or shoot me an, an email. Um, it has been a, a crazy past couple of days, but I'm completely open now and free. So now I can address all the calls I have missed. Uh, we're addressing everything now and all the emails. Um, so yes, please shoot me an email or give me a call um, and I can look into helping you with that. That is a big concern. We don't want you to be wrongfully evicted from your house. So by all means, please, as soon as you can, um, contact uh, myself. Uh, we have another question from a, um, an OS attendee. I live in, in a city owned building, rent is still being required that no regular maintenance is being done. Is that due to, rent is still being required, but no regular maintenance. You know, um, that is a cause of concern. If it's a city owned facility, there should be, um, regular maintenance being done. Um, even though our city hall doors were closed to the public, the city hall itself was still working. Uh, it was only closed to ensure that, you know, that we weren't spreading any of the, um, you know, the virus to the employee base and things of that nature. Um, so by all means, please give me a call um, or, or text me. Uh, that is a concern. There should be some uh, maintenance work done. Um, give me a call so I can know more. I know you want to be a noms here, but please uh, call me and um, I can take care of that for you. Um, on the Facebook side, let's see some questions here. From Alexander, um, I'm interested to see if there are ways to implement nonviolent police social work units within, yes, within the police department. Um, as um, if you're on here before, um, as I mentioned, that is something we're looking into. It would, it helps alleviate the stress on the department as well as to the community of having these kind of programs set, having these. Um, non-violent police social work units um, address these calls uh, that way they can use the time to address different calls and really just engage with the public in a in a more calm and casual way i'll take in a few more questions before we uh we wrap things up let's see hey is there a hey there is there a, this is from ali um Hader, is there a city of Hawthorne committee that focuses in creating educational cultural programs with emphasis, with emphasis in children and youth? Um, there is a youth community um, set up, but I, I, I'm sorry to say that I, they haven't been active in quite some time. Um, I've taken the liberty on myself to create a lot of programs for my own office. Uh, we, I've been working with the New Stars Family Justice Center to create programs. Uh, you can find out on my website. I've worked with Michael's Learning Place, uh, to also work on programs, especially for our youth with um, mental disabilities. Um, educational culture, you know, there could be a lot more done. Honestly, there can be. Um, and, and if you have any ideas, by all means, please call me and uh, I can implement those a lot faster on my end. Um, there's less red tape from me, um, especially when I'm pushing them forward. So by all means, um, I would love to have more of those programs implemented. There is room in our budget for that. So please contact my office office, contact me, and um, let's start getting these programs into our uh, community. 
Uh, I'll take a few more questions before we wrap up. Let's see. Again, if you're on Facebook, you do not have to be on Zoom to ask questions. Um, uh, I'm monitoring the Facebook Live questions as well, so there's no need to uh, be fearful on that. Uh, Brian, uh, to answer your question about the uh, police budget, yeah, it, it is very common for a city that has their own police department. Um, you'll, you'll see a lot, which is why there's so, so much um, attention to it to try and find a restructure. Um, a lot of cities with their own police department have, it is close to 50, 55% of a city's budget to maintain its own police department. Um, when you don't have that, then you're um, given sheriffs. Um, and, and the hard thing about being with a sheriff department is um, they're stretched out even thinner. So if you do call in, you won't get a response for you know, X amount of time. Um, so having your own police department does cost a little bit more money, uh, but you have a faster response time. You'll be able to engage with them a lot better. Uh, but there, there, we have to find ways to kind of work with that and find a way to uh, make it work better for the community. Um, but I, I tell you, it's, it's a lot better than having the, the sheriffs, trust me. Um, you call, you'd be lucky if they answer within <laughs> an hour uh, to any kind of call you're calling. Um, so yeah, that, that's the difference between having sheriffs and your own Hawthorne police, uh, your own police department. It costs more but you get faster response time, you're able to engage with them, you know where they are. Sheriffs, they're almost like, they're almost invisible. It's kind of hard to, uh, and you've heard about this um, in other cities as well. Um, let's see. City Hall is gonna be reopening July 6th. That's the Monday after 4th of July. Let's see. Hang on. I do agree, Ali, that funds should be um, looked into for the Hawthorne community. Um, the funds should be allocated to a Hawthorne committee that will oversee what programs it's been in on. Uh, yes, that there should be a good a committee set up that way. Um, that, that is what the council is there for, but having a separate committee with residents is a better idea as well, because it brings in the community closer to their local municipality and they'll have ideas and see things that we can't necessarily see all the time. So that's a very good um, um, idea that I would like to move forward on. And call me so we can actually push it forward. Um, Sugar, uh, Luna, I'm sorry to hear that it, it does take a month uh, for your daughter to see a counselor that is extremely long. Um, and it's, it's sad to see that, you know, with the amount of budget they have, that you're taking that much time just to get the resources and necessary attention for your own uh, daughter and your family, uh, that is a cause of concern. Thank you for bringing that up to me, um, especially from the other groups that were here. I want to address that with the school district to see um, how we can accomplish that. What is the reason behind it? And they'll be on the uh, last uh, virtual town hall in July, right after the state treasurer. Let's see. Uh, hello, uh, from Juan, um, when do unlawful detainers process, where do unlawful detainers process, uh, when can evictions proceed, what if those evictions are not COVID-19 related? Um, so if it's not COVID-19 uh, related, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's the normal process uh, when it comes to evictions. Um, th those can start, you know, normally. Um, when it comes to COVID-19 related issues, um, there is a moratorium, there is a uh, payback program in place. Um, I have that uh, ordinance in place on my website, so please visit Hader at Hader Hawthorne, oh, not Hader, HaderHawthorne.com to view that. Um, and for the processing of unlawful detainers, that's gonna be our building and safety, to, actually, it'll be our city attorney's office. Uh, so if you do have something like that, questions, please contact our city attorney, I will place his, contact information on my website as well. Uh, so you can have easier access to have all those kind of questions answered. Uh, I'll take two more questions. Uh, everyone else, rest assured, I, I will be uh, answering everything that's left unanswered um, through email or through a call. Um, Veronica, I do agree having funds for parent workshops and showing parents what resources are available is a 
great way to help um, kids with emotional problems. And again, that helps uh, decrease any future problems that we might see um, as they grow up. So know that is something I'm working on already with two groups. Um, I'll have their information online. Um, and if there's any other nonprofits that you know of that do this kind of work, by all means, send them my way. I will create a program with them. I will use my own uh, funds um, and to get them moving. Uh, for a lot of these programs, I've used funds out of my own pocket, not the city, and not even from my office. I want to help the city um, create programs without having to spend extra of your tax, uh, tax uh, dollars. Uh, Lisa, thank you so much for thanking me. Um, Christina, we have lunch. <clears throat> we have a question from Christina. What is being done about homelessness? As I'm stepping out of my house, I'm seeing more and more homeless encampment. For instance, on my way to get tested, I saw one of them at Memorial Park in full underwear. I felt so bad about that one. There were also a few more, also by 99 cent store. All of a sudden, there are small camps there. So will homeless issues that are rising in Hawthorne be addressed? Uh, yes, I have received a lot of emails regarding this issue. Uh, it is a, now it's becoming uh, next to COVID-19, this is my next important initiative. Um, you, I, there has been an increased tick when it comes to um, homelessness. You're seeing that a lot more in the city now. Um, we are creating programs to address that. We are looking into it now. The encampments you're seeing, uh, they have ran rampant. Um, sadly, uh, having myself work only uh, with our code enforcement police department, um, is not enough. So please also contact other council members. Uh, let them hear your concerns. The more we can get them engaged and to actually listen and help, uh, it makes it a lot easier and faster than just having, you know, my office push. But we are looking into programs to help rehabilitate them, help them move. Um, our, uh, the, the City Hall has a bunch of programs already now working with PATH. Um, and we're getting them off the streets by getting them housing and jobs too. Um, so we're working more on that. We have to do a more increased approach to it. And as the city hall opens and all of our employees come back to work uh, on full staff, um, we're going to be addressing that even harder and faster, but in a, uh, in a good way. <clears throat> um, David Trump has the Hawthorne COVID testing location closed. Nope, it, it has not closed. They do walk-ins right now. And uh, I'm happy to say that I have locked them in for the entire month of July as well. Um, I'm also excited to say that now the Hawthorne Testing Center is the showcase um, center. So apparently they're taking all their RNs and EOCs and department heads and all these, uh, you know, uh, pharmaceutical companies are actually coming to the, the test center I opened up, the one I'm working with now. Uh, they're using that as the uh, model for everywhere else. We, we've, we've had no cases of our staff being infected. Um, we're, we're getting people out in and out extremely quickly registering without any headache um, so be happy that the one here in Hawthorne is the prime example of what a testing center is um, so by all means please go get there go there get tested it's free if you have our time please call me um, I can register you in there and plus you can also go in and do walk-ins as well yes I do agree with you David um, it was it was kind of uh, odd not seeing it on there. It could be because they've been um, maxed out when it comes to how many um, open spots they have that, for that particular day. But uh, you can do walk-ins. So by all means, uh, just go at any time that you are able to go and um, they can register you there. Uh, I did bring that up to them this morning as I didn't see it on the site as well. Um, so they're going to fix that. But by all means, um, just go there. You can do a walk-in. They can check you in there. Um, and uh, if you do fall into that, uh, use my name. Uh, if I'm not there, if I'm there, uh, give me a call or text and uh, I'll walk you in. Uh, we'll do one more question, I'm sorry. We are gonna go over. Um, I appreciate that comment, Veronica. Um, I I'm trying to answer everything, we all the questions out here, I'm trying to address everything. Um, I appreciate you bringing that, uh, that I, I won't have all the answers. I'm not trying to pretend I do, but at least having that open conversation and, you know, working with the community and admitting where my strengths and weaknesses are, look, it's the best way to, you know, as any leader to move forward and, and fix issues. Um, if you pretend you know everything, uh, that's the wrong thing to say. And the rule is if you're the smartest person in the room, then you're in the wrong room. Um, the last question I will hit 
Oh, Veronica, I'm, uh, sorry, if it's taking you a week to get your results, um, that, sh that shouldn't be the case. Uh, please contact me and um, I'll see why that is. It, it max takes only three days. Um, but they have had some technical issues, but if you still have an issue like that, please let me know. Um, and again, keep getting tested, it's free. So if you wanna get, keep going in every week, by all means, go after it. Um, the last one I'll take is uh, what's being done about fireworks. Um, so with fireworks, the big issue, big item. Um, so I've sent a survey, um, I'm going to be sending out a petition as well. I, I've received, wow, almost close to 600 responses, that's amazing. I'm going to send it out again, please fill it. Um, those responses will help gauge better of which tactic I can take, because I wanna hear from you and what way to address it. Um, I will also be sending out a petition for residents to sign, um, looking into banning um, fireworks. Uh, it's already banned only for the 4th of July from 10 to 12 uh, midnight. Um, there's already a thousand dollar fine, which is like the max we can do as a city, unfortunately. Uh, we are looking to see if we can increase it, um, uh, but we're, we're trying to see if that has to take a citywide vote. Um, there are limitations when it comes to uh, from the state on what we can do because we're not a charter city. Um, so I am working on that. We're working on increased um, patrolling. I'm creating a citizen um, task force that I will also be on to uh, be working with and implementing uh, to find ways of addressing it even faster and almost making them be like a neighborhood watch for these fireworks issues which would go along with an online platform where residents can anonymously um, send in pictures, tag locations and videos of where they're happening. Uh, this way we can address it uh, faster and sooner. Um, it's almost done. Uh, we're making this from scratch, the online uh, reporting system. Um, it should be up live by Monday, but give me a, give me a few days after that. Um, but I'm hoping to get up and running by before 4th of July and getting that running um, and so we can start trying it um, the whole thing is we know that 4th of July is not going to be the last time you're going to hear fireworks. That tends to happen quite a lot throughout the year. Um, so uh, the Citizen Task uh, Committee, if you want to join it, please send me an email or call. The online platforming, banning them, uh, uh, you know, banning the safe and sane is also going to help limit the amount of illegals you do hear. I know it's a touchy subject for the nonprofits. I'm working with them to, especially the veteran groups, um, the funds that they would lose out from these sales, I am working on to try and find them a different source of revenue for them to touch into so they don't feel as if they're losing anything. Um, and it'll be a win-win. We'll start like maybe having a fireworks show where they can um, raise the funds for and have the vet groups um, get funding from that. And we'll have our own city um, fireworks show uh, done at one time. So it's not you know bombarding the residents every day. Um, so that's what we're doing now. Uh, and that's what I'm doing about fireworks. Uh, so again, watch your emails for the survey, the petition. Um, I'm sorry, I'd love to keep going. Uh, I think we're almost running for two hours. Uh, but for all the other questions I haven't touched, I will be uh, emailing you my response or texting and I'm replying by text now. Um, again, thank you all for joining me today. It's been a wonderful town hall. Again, this is not the only times you can contact me. Um, I do have office hours the second and third Thursday. The first and fourth Thursday are when I have these town halls bringing in guests. Um, and plus any other time you want, you can call, email, I can set up separate Zoom meetings. Uh, this is just a way for me to engage everyone at one shot. But again, by all means, thank you all. I, here's my information on the screen um, and email me. But again, thank you all for attending. Visit my website for more information. Sign up on our website uh, for uh, weekly, e uh, weekly um, email blasts, um, other information that we send out. Um, again, thank you all. And uh, I'll see you next time. Have a nice one, everyone.